What if the story of Germany didn't begin with castles, kings, or even tribes, but with another kind of human entirely? A species long gone, yet still alive in our blood. Scientists once thought they vanished 40,000 years ago, but new DNA evidence says otherwise. Their genes still shape how millions of Germans look, think, and even survive today. Who were they? Why did they disappear? And what happens when the line between them and us begins to blur? This is not prehistory. This is a living echo. This is the secret written in Neanderthal DNA. The story begins in a limestone valley in southern Germany, the Neandertal near Dusseldorf. It was here in 1856 that quarry workers uncovered strange bones in a cave, thick, heavy, and ancient beyond measure. At first, no one understood what they had found. Some called it a deformed human, others a relic of biblical giants. Only later did scientists realize it was the first recognized remains of a different human species, Homo neanderthalensis. But that was only the beginning. For more than a century, the Neanderthals were portrayed as brutes, hunched, slow, primitive. Textbooks painted them as failures of evolution, wiped out by the brilliance of modern humans. Yet in the last 20 years, genetic science has rewritten that story entirely. When researchers in Leipzig's Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology sequenced the Neanderthal genome in 2010, they made a world-shaking discovery. Modern humans outside of Africa carry traces of Neanderthal DNA between 1 and 2 percent. That means every person of European descent, including most Germans, is part Neanderthal. But how did that happen? And what does that DNA still do? This is where the mystery deepens. Somewhere around 60,000 years ago, modern humans migrating out of Africa met Neanderthals in Europe and Western Asia. They didn't just fight, they mixed. The evidence is written in genes controlling skin color, immune responses, even the way we process sunlight and cold. In Germany, these inherited traits quietly shaped how people adapted to northern climates after the Ice Age. So when you walk through Berlin, Munich, or Cologne today, it's possible that the faces you see carry echoes of those ancient encounters. Do you ever wonder which part of you isn't entirely modern? That's what the team at Genealogy X explores. How? DNA connects us to the forgotten chapters of human history. Subscribe, and you'll never see your ancestry the same way again. But what exactly have scientists found in Germany itself? Deep in the Swabian Alb region, caves like Holenstein Stadel and Vogelherd have yielded astonishing clues. These are some of the earliest known meeting points between Neanderthals and modern humans. Stone tools from both species lie in the same layers of sediment, proof that their worlds overlapped, maybe for thousands of years. In 2017, DNA extracted from a bone fragment in that region revealed something extraordinary. The bone belonged to a child whose mother was Neanderthal and father was Denisovan, another extinct human species from the East. It was the first direct evidence of interbreeding between different human kinds. If such unions happened once, how many more times were their stories simply lost to dust? Germany has become ground zero for decoding this ancient past. In a lab in Leipzig, geneticists continue to map variations of Neanderthal DNA found in modern Europeans. They discovered that these genes influence everything from skin tone to the way the immune system responds to infections. Some variants may even affect modern susceptibility to diseases like COVID-19, proof that our evolutionary ghosts still influence our health today. But the relationship wasn't one-sided. Modern humans also left traces in late Neanderthals. DNA from Neanderthal fossils in Croatia and Siberia shows bits of modern human DNA from earlier contact. So the question isn't whether we replaced Neanderthals, it's whether, in a way, we became them. Were they really so different? Archaeology suggests not. 
In caves across Germany and France, Neanderthals painted with pigments, carved bone tools, and even made jewelry from eagle claws. They buried their dead carefully, sometimes sprinkling bodies with ochre. Their brains were as large as ours. The stereotype of the primitive caveman no longer stands, and yet, around 40,000 years ago, they vanished. Why? The simplest answer is that they didn't vanish completely. They were absorbed. Their numbers dwindled, their culture faded, but their genes lived on in us. In Germany, where the first bones were found, the people who uncovered them were unknowingly digging up their own distant cousins. Does that change how we see ourselves? If the line between human and Neanderthal is blurred, what does? That say about the idea of progress or superiority. Some scientists argue that modern humans simply outnumbered Neanderthals through innovation and social networks. Others suggest climate swings pushed them beyond recovery, but genetic evidence adds another layer. There were fewer Neanderthals than once thought, maybe only a few thousand scattered across Europe. Small, isolated populations are vulnerable to change, disease, and chance. In the end, the difference between survival and extinction may have been as random as weather, as fragile as love. In Germany, one Neanderthal tooth found in the Einhornhöhle cave of the Harz Mountains dates to just 47,000 years ago, one of the last of its kind. When researchers analyzed it, they found traces of plant microfossils showing the owner chewed medicinal herbs. This means Neanderthals practiced some form of natural medicine long before written history. Imagine that, a Neanderthal healer in Ice Age Germany, tending the sick with knowledge passed by word of mouth, just as humans would do for millennia. So were we really that different after all? Or did we inherit more than genes? Did we inherit memory, behavior, empathy? Modern German populations still carry specific clusters of Neanderthal genes, particularly in regions associated with keratin, production affecting hair and skin, and immune defense. Some of those same gene variants help modern Europeans fight certain viruses, but increase the risk of allergies or autoimmune conditions. Evolution, it seems, is always a trade-off. And there's another twist. Certain Neanderthal genes influence how people sleep and how their bodies respond to sunlight, traits crucial for surviving long northern winters. Without those genes, the first modern humans to settle Europe might never have adapted. So, in a sense, Neanderthals helped humanity thrive long after their own disappearance. But how far does this legacy go? Could fragments of Neanderthal behavior, like emotional sensitivity, creativity, or even music, have passed through DNA, not culture? While science hasn't proven that, the discovery of flutes made from animal bones in Germany's geissen Klosterle cave, dating back more than 40,000 years, raises haunting possibilities. Were they made by early humans alone, or did Neanderthal influence linger in their rhythm and song? Perhaps the first melodies ever played in Europe carried the breath of both species. Today, when Germans explore their ancestry through genetic testing, the results often show 1-2% Neanderthal DNA. It's a small number, yet it connects them directly to beings who walked the same forests, hunted the same rivers, and gazed at the same moon. It's humbling and strangely comforting. Science tells us that every living human is part of one continuous story. There is no us versus them. Only we, the Neanderthals, never truly vanished. They merged into the grand mosaic of humanity. If you find that thought as fascinating as it is unsettling, subscribe to Genealogy X, where we use DNA to bridge past and present, to remind us that the people of history are still alive within us. So the next time you stand in the Neander Valley, the birthplace of their name, ask yourself, what did they dream? Did they wonder about us the way we now wonder about them? Because somewhere in your own cells, hidden in the spirals of your DNA, may lie the same spark that once burned in a Neanderthal's mind. The same instincts, the same fears, the same will to survive. And perhaps that is the greatest revelation of all. 
the story 